Hey, Tactical Painter back out of the Suits Crafting Wood Shop. Welcome back out to the shop for Shop Talk Tuesday. Haven't been out in the shop for a couple of weeks. We've been uh, really busy at work, of course, as you guys know, you've heard me say that for the last several weeks. Um, we've got our new person training. They're doing pretty good, so hopefully here soon we'll cut down on the amount of hours that I'll be doing, but I don't see that happening anytime soon, probably for the next couple of months. So that's all right. We're enjoying all the extra hours. Some of the overtime has actually helped pay for some of the stuff that we're going to have coming up in the shop. One of which is actually I'm going to be buying an actual stabilization chamber um, from Turntex, uh, Curtis down there in Texas. I'm going to be getting an actual 4-inch round stabilization chamber. I've been using a uh, cookie jar, actually, as my stabilization chamber, and I've been using inside uh, beakers, scientific beakers inside to put my blanks in, retain the cactus juice, you know, dyes and all that stuff. And then just using different weights and stuff to hold the, the wood and stuff down. And that's been working really well for a while. Um, but with the amount of production that I've been going through, um, some of the hassle with cleaning that thing up each time that I use it and having to deal with um, the multiple components has been kind of a pain. So I'm going to get an actual stabilization chamber from Curtis there at Turntex. Um, they're going to ship that to me here in just a couple of weeks. And then uh, we're going to get to actually doing a lot more stabilization uh, here going into the future. So I'm really excited to do that. I'm going to keep my old stabilization chamber because it's great for doing larger items like what I'm about to show you. So I wasn't out here Shop Talk Tuesday last week. I was banned from coming out in my own shop because it was my anniversary. My wife and I have been married for three years as of last Tuesday, and so I wasn't gonna come out to the shop because we were on our anniversary. So uh, we decided to go to the coast. Uh, we had a great time. We saw my brother while I was down there because my brother lives on the coast. Uh, hung out, had a great time, and then uh, we drove back. And we, we just had a day trip because I only had the one day off because of how hectic work has been. Um, but we had a great time. While we were driving there though, found a couple of interesting things. And so I want to show you guys those and that's one of the reasons why I'm going to keep my bigger stabilization chamber is for these items. So let me show you what I got. I got a couple of giant pine cones. Look at these things. They're absolutely mammoth. I have no idea where they came from. They're full of pine nuts and things inside and they're freaking huge. Look how big those are. So just for comparison, here is an ordinary Douglas fir cone, and then here is the pine cone. This thing is gigantic, and it was completely weird why these were out there. We're driving down the road, heading to the coast, and then off on the side of the road, I see this sucker just sitting there, just up like this on its, on its head, and uh, just sitting there on the side of the road. I was like, what the heck is that doing there? So we passed it. Um, we stopped at a town uh, called Banks, Oregon. It's just a, like it was just 30 seconds past. We were a half mile out. Kids needed to use the bathroom. We went to Banks. I told the wife, I'm going to go back and get that thing. And she goes, no, you're not. I was like, yes, I am. <laughs> and she's like, no, you're going to get back on the freeway. We're going to the coast. I was like, it's a half mile. We're going to go. And so we went back and forth. And finally, she realized I was already on the road to go back. So there was no more talking me out of it. I'd already gotten on the road to go back that half mile. Went back 30 seconds is all it took. Picked up that puppy. And then just a few feet further off on, on the shoulder was this one sitting there. And I'm looking around at the trees going, none of these trees have these hanging from them. So I don't know where these came from, where they fell off from, what they were doing on the shoulder of the highway. Uh, but by golly, I picked them up and put them in the trunk and they're even bigger now uh, because as they've been drying out, they've actually opened up more and so which is a good thing because I'm able to actually get more of the pine nuts out. Let me see if I can shake a couple out here. Nope, still not breaking loose, but they're going to open up more. This one, this one here, you see the bottom there is all flared upward. It was just as flat as this one when I first brought it home. So that's a good sign that they're still opening up so I'm really excited for those I'm gonna get those cast up these things I brought my square out so I can measure these these are just over four inches which is why I have to keep the uh, stable the larger stabilization chamber because these won't fit inside of the uh, the new one that I've got on the way 
So this one might, this one looks like it's probably about three inches. Let's get that lined up. Nope, this one is right at four inches. So the smaller one is right at four inches. This bigger one is almost five inches wide. So this bigger one is huge. So I'm gonna get these all dried out. I'm gonna stabilize them. And then I'm gonna cast those up into something. And I'm gonna make it for my wife to commemorate our three year anniversary. And to hold on to that awesome story of her and I bickering and she's arguing with me. And I'm already driving back to grab them. So it's gonna be fun. Um, I'm going to do more pine cone stuff uh, in the future. Um, I've got those pine cone blanks. I'm going to turn one of those up. And then I'm just going to start selling the blanks online because I think that the pine cone blanks are a lot of fun. I've seen a lot of people do them. And uh, I, I think that I can put a twist on them that you guys might enjoy. You know, whether it be, you know, the, the cosmic cloud or the nebula blanks doing those with pine cones in them. I think that some of them have just enough contrast that they'll show up with the dark night sky and that that breakup of the pattern I think can be interesting especially since pine cones have a uh, very unique spiraling pattern. You know it, it's a very mathematical pattern and I think that definitely adds interest to that. So having that natural effect inside of something that's cosmic I think will be kind of fun and then just doing it in some just random colors like blues and greens and whites you know give it kind of an alpine look and being pine well that's just right up its alley so uh, I, I kind of like the that thought so I think I'm gonna do that and if you guys want to see that then let me know down in the comment section below and I'll be happy to uh, entertain your your interests so so those were fun. I really enjoyed those. I'm going to put that down before I fling it across the shop or something. just looks too much like a boomerang. Um, we got out in the shop a few times this week and I was able to turn up a couple of pens. Um, one pen that I made, I actually made for my wife's um, OB. I've got her OB doctor is retiring, which is really exciting for her. Um, not much for my wife because she's a great doctor. We're going to miss her tremendously and she delivered both of my little girls and so she's going to be actually retiring and she's going to be moving to Spain um, and then she's talking about possibly going to Syria after a year in Spain and going to Syria where her uh, family is from and doing some women's health stuff down there. So that's a really cool deal. So when we found out about that we're like, okay, we're not going to miss you as much because that's a really worthy cause. It's really awesome that she's going to do that. So she's retiring from the States, moving overseas, and she's going to be doing some stuff over there uh, to help out women uh, that, have a, you know, that have a harder time gaining access to health than, than women do here in the U.S. So that's a really worthy cause. It was really neat to do that. So I made her up um, uh, olive wood. Uh, gold Baron pen and I did it just kind of on the fly. I didn't take any photos of it or I'd show you up here. I wish I had. It was a really beautiful pen. I did the Gold Baron G2 pen conversion on it and uh, my wife said that when she gave it to her today um, she cried and she's going to be doing some writing and some uh, blogging and stuff and she said when she's writing out her draft she's going to be using that pen and it's stories like that that are just really really neat. I really like um, you know hearing stories when you have a cool story like that. If you've got a cool story about a pen that you've given somebody, leave it in the comment section below. Share that with folks. It's just fun. You know, it's a really cool thing. It's rewarding things like that that make me want to do, um, that makes me want to make. You know, it it inspires me. So it's, it's fun stuff like that that just, it makes you want to make. Um, I also did a birthday gift. A co-worker of mine that's working with us, she had a birthday present that she wanted me to make. And so I made up a birthday present for her girlfriend and gave that to her and I'll show the photos here. It was a really beautiful pen. It was Shimmer Violet and Curly Koa. We did a Shimmer Violet Pearl X Powder Resin with pearlescent powder added to it in order to break up some of the uh, clearness of the resin so that you couldn't see through it and see the brass or anything. Um, painted the insides of the tubes black, glued the tubes in and then turned that up and it turned out fantastically. Uh, we did that in a Black Titanium Pro Slimline 
gel ink pen and it turned out just wonderfully. It was the first one of those pens that I actually did. I have picked up a few of those because I want to do some and she want, she liked that pen style and she wanted that and so made it up for her my first time. Ran into a couple of issues with it and so when I put out that video I'll show you guys what my issues were that I ran into with it. Um, make sure that you trim your barrels exact. That's all I'm going to say about it. Just make sure that you trim your barrels exact I show some steps on how to fix uh, if you are within a certain tolerance, and I go into that in the video, um, and I'll try and get that video out here uh, within the next couple of weeks. So I've got a video that I've got mostly edited, probably come out uh, at the end of this week, and I'll get that put out so you guys can see some of the stuff that we've got going on. The one that's going to be coming out this next weekend, um, it is actually an older video, um, so you'll see my old Delta up there again. And uh, I, I turn up a sketch pencil for a contractor buddy of mine, the guy that actually helped me move my wall, uh, which is behind you, uh, back 10 feet or so. Um, so I made that sketch pencil up for him, and uh, he helped me move my wall back, and it worked out really well. He's a former Navy master diver, and uh, he used to go down and fix ships and do a lot of underwater uh, activities, uh, fixing ships and things. So... Um, Awesome guy, really happy to know him, and I was happy to make that pen for him, or that pencil, it was a contractor's pencil, and uh, so I'm going to do that video, you guys will see that coming out at the end of the week. One of the things I've got going on right now, I've got another one of the uh, Slimline Pro uh, click pens in gel ink coming out here soon, and this one I've got, it's a Cosmic Cloud Blank with a hybrid maple burl. So this one I'm really excited for. Really love these uh, Cosmic Cloud hybrids. They turn out really neat. You never know how they're going to turn out. I've painted the tubes black on the inside. And so it's going to be an interesting contrast when you have the wood in the background because I didn't paint the wood before I uh, cast the resin. So the wood's going to be lighter. And so it's going to kind of shift colors when you go between wood over underneath the resin and the barrel underneath the resin because the barrel is going to be black and so it's going to really show the vibrant colors and then the wood's going to be lighter so it's only going to show partial colors you'll actually see the wood underneath so it's going to be kind of interesting it's going to be really neat i'm really looking forward to it my plan for today was actually going to be doing the glue boost update that i've been talking to you guys about you see my glue boost over here in the corner i was actually going to be doing a review on that this week but my plan with it was actually going to be to take a pen that i had done in the wax and high grade polish uh finishes that i used to use the mylins high friction polish and the wax finishes and stuff and I had been testing those. I had this pen that I'd been using for a few years and all of the polish has come off of it. So all you can see is just the really high polished wood, uh, but you can't actually see any of the wax coating anymore. So the shine and the luster wasn't there anymore. So I was going to demonstrate redoing the finish on that pen and using the glue boost that you see up here in the corner. I was going to use the glue boost and, and refinish it, resurface it, and you guys were going to see it and it was going to be awesome. But while tapping it apart, my pieces all broke apart. So slimline pens don't have a whole lot to grip onto, and I had one piece crack, and the entire thing just catastrophically failed. And uh, so I had to kibosh that idea, and I didn't have enough time to start a new one. So what I've done is I had this piece of scrap maple burl that I had stabilized. Um, had a customer that's ordered an editor pen in maple burl, and this was just a piece of cutoff from that stabilized chunk. Uh, it's a half inch and it was originally a half inch by three quarter and now it's a half inch by half inch. I made it square. I'm going to drill a seven millimeter hole through it and then uh, we'll get some tubes glued in and then we will do this one up. So this is a really gorgeous piece of maple burl so I'm happy to see that this small piece of scrap isn't going to get wasted because only being a half an inch you can't do much with it but if you square it up and make it a half inch both ways you can make a slim line pen out of it. So that's just a testament. If you've got beautiful woods and they're only a half inch thick, you can still make up some beautiful stuff with them. So I really like using scrap wood, letting nothing go to waste. So we're going to do that as a demonstration for the glue boost uh, coming up probably next week if I can find the time to get out here and get it done. I did have two more orders come in this week and I've got a guy asking me about a larger stabilized piece of the uh, Calico 
uh, maple burl, he actually wants like a six inch long piece that's two inches wide and an inch thick. Um, so I've got to take some photos of that for him tonight, get those sent off so he can make some decisions on, uh, on what he wants. So we're going to go ahead and get to that. I'm going to cut it off here. I'm going to quit waving this blank around. I want to thank you guys so much for sticking with me, following me on this channel. Um, I know I'm probably not the most interesting guy, but you know, you get to hear stuff about my family. You get to hear stuff about what we got going on here in the shop. You get to put in your inputs, and I take those, and I do with them what I can. And so we're going to go ahead and get this cut out here. Thank you so much. I'm going to be getting out here as often as I can, re trying really hard to stick with my schedule of being out here at least every Tuesday and getting your stuff out. Sometimes they come out late, and it's actually like Wednesday morning that you finally see my videos. Like right now, it's actually... 11.20 at night out here in the shop on Tuesday. So I'm going to get this edited, get it cut out to you, and you guys will see it Wednesday morning when you wake up. So thank you so much for joining me out here in the shop. Be sure to check out some of my other videos here on the sides. Like, share, and subscribe. This is Tactical Painter out in the Suits Crafting Woodshop, signing out.